Once in a while, I like to remind people, just so that you know, and so that the people who might be watching us, because they don't have anything else to do, they might be watching us, uh, remember that when we make decisions, we try to make the best decisions we can for the town, but we always have to follow the zoning code. That's sort of our Bible. So whatever we do, we can't break the zoning code. Anyway, correspondence that we have tonight. Oh, and I'd also like to remind people uh, who might be here to say something that unless there's a public hearing scheduled, the public is not permitted to speak, but you are welcome to send us emails and we read them all. And we take them very seriously. A correspondence this evening, we have a memorandum from Public Works Director regarding Old Sea Point Road. Um, we have a letter from M. Sherry regarding the Crescent Beach Senior Living, and we have a letter from Tom Egan regarding the Ele uh, Elliott Private Access Way. Let's take the minutes first. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes of our August 21st meeting? Not may I have a motion to accept? Motion to accept. Second. Second. All in favor? Jackson. Right, the next thing is a consent agenda item, and I'll remind the board that if you want to have a substantive discussion, we have to put it on a uh, we have to put it on to our next meeting date. Uh, is there anybody who'd like to discuss this in detail? If not, I have a motion for the board to consider. Madam Chair, I have a motion for the board to consider uh, that it be ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Olympia companies for a de minimis change to the previously approved site plan for the Inn by the Sea, located at 40 Bowery Beach Road, to rotate the mechanical building and change the stone pillars to a shingle pillar approved as a consent agenda item. Second. All in favor? Approved. Okay, let's move on to Jonesy's convenience store site plan. Ron, would you introduce yourself, please? Yes. I'm Ron St. Pierre. I'm here representing Greg Jones of Jonesy's. Uh, this past, I guess now several weeks ago, the board uh, did a site walk at uh, Greg's current place of business in regard to what is proposed. Uh, out of that meeting came several items of concern, uh, and I guess more than concern, several items that uh, were addressed by the board and by Greg. And we have since looked at those items and made some changes to the set of plans that you had for that evening that were submitted on that day. Um, as uh, usual, Maureen sent me a synopsis of that uh, I received this week. We've made the changes, and if you don't mind, I'll take my glasses off so I can read them. Uh, there was a center roadside island that we had proposed. It was larger than this one. It had benches in it and so forth, and it also had a six-foot sidewalk. Uh, what came out of the site walk with the board and with Greg was that the sidewalk had shrunk down to five feet wide. And this island, this arc in this island was shrunk down so that when a vehicle was parked at a gas island, another vehicle could make passage by it and do it in a safe manner. <coughs> One of the things we also did was we extended that sidewalk across that end so it will tie with uh, this house right in front on that very corner has a very narrow sidewalk in front of it. And it is a curb cut across the street 
uh, for a sidewalk. So what we've done is continued the planned sidewalk that we had on the original plan and carried it through where we have shrunk up this entrance, created a, a larger island, and made a better pedestrian way through there. Uh, the curving shapes in front of Greg's building itself, we had placed a, an arced, again, an arced uh, landscaped island for perennials and uh, whatever. So what came out of the sidewalk is we have squared that off so that it, it better sets to the front of the building rather than, than out there. This was one of the things that came out of it. Um, trash receptacle in the back. We had the dumpster setting out here in an enclosure. We've moved it approximately 25 feet to the south. And in doing that, off of the proposed addition for storage in the back, we're looking at putting a stockade type fence with a gate in it so that it will be directly behind the store and screened by that stockade fence. And then the benches were deleted, as I said, up in here. That came out of the site walk. Uh, in reviewing comments from OST, and I received those uh, courtesy of Maureen, uh, there were a couple of things. They wanted to note put on the plan that this catch basin that we're going to install would be installed at the lowest point in the driveway to better facilitate drainage. We've made that note on the plan. Uh, we have carried the existing contours through on this as well. That was one of the things that just a matter of a layer being shut off. The landscaping we have taken and been more precise and moved the lettering so that the landscaping is much more in line and easier to depict now. The survey from Pliskin Day, I believe you have on the set of plans that was submitted. Site distances, we have those in the notes here. And it says, uh, site distance is shown as determined by Vision Project Services Inc., which are 350 or more feet in each direction from each entrance. So those are on the plan. Also, they wanted to, where we have shrunk this curve up from the original 38 and a half feet are down to a little under 28 feet. And we also have taken this one from roughly 50 feet down to 36 feet. And we made a note on the plan that says existing curb to be removed to accommodate new entrances. They uh, said they'd like to see that on the plan. And uh, details should be added for the proposed catch basin and uh, retire the drainage for the riprap coming out into the, the ditch line where that will be coming off of the catch basin and also erosion control the handicap is there uh, so based on all of that we would like the board to consider giving us final approval this evening. Ron, I think there's one really big thing that I'd like you to show in case there's anybody here that is going to speak to this, and that's the new front to the building. And we have a picture of that. After numerous times, I think that the Ron and Turgeon came up with a, a nice facade that blends itself and lends itself as well to what you were looking for as part of your town center appeal. Uh, this is a much less sterile facade than what we had uh, originally come with. 
has been through uh, numerous dynamics since the beginning, and I think it has a lot of curb appeal, and I think it will lend itself. Thank you. Uh, before we ask any questions, I think we should have a, a public hearing, so I'm going to open the public hearing. If there's anybody who wishes to speak to this project, please come up to the podium and identify yourself and give your address. No one wants to say anything? Well, then I'll close the public hearing back up to the podium and open it up to the board. Anyway, you can uh, just put Jonesies on the front instead of Freshies and on the run. We have, we, we worked through that today. Uh, Greg met with uh, people from on the run and from mobile. And we will be changing the hierarchy on the building so that this will say Jonesies up here. It will receive prominence and on the run will be brought to one side or the other in the freshies so that Jonesies will have top uh, priority in the hierarchy and the other two will be placed accordingly. You still need on the run up there though, huh? Yes, sir, we do. It's part of the franchise agreement that okay. Greg has entered into. Other questions or comments? I'm very happy to hear that. I had the same question because... I couldn't change it because it, it, it just yeah. happened today. My concern was that uh, where it was originally on the right, underneath the right gable, the canopy is going to hide visibility to that somewhat. So what would the hierarchy in the end will more than likely be Jonesy's up here, on the run here, and Freshie's over here. Right. Questions about anything? I, I would like to compliment you because I think you've been listening hard and I cannot tell you what the building looked like initially. We weren't very happy with it, but because we have standards in the town center, we hope that this building is going to attract lots of business and attention to Jonesy's on the run and be very, very attractive and be a great addition to the town center. So we appreciate your working so hard with Maureen and the rest of us and listening well. Uh, are there any other questions here at all? Okay, if not, may I have a motion for the board to consider? Barbara? Yeah. Uh, motion for the board to consider findings and fact. Um, one, Greg Jones is requesting site plan review <coughs> to convert the existing gas service station located at 298 Ocean House Road to a gas station convenience store, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19 dash four, six, dash four, D3, town center district design requirements. Two, the applicant has requested several changes to the submitted plans to facilitate better interior circulation. Three, the project's location in the town center increases the importance of pedestrian facilities, landscaping, and building design. Four, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-6-4 D3 town center district design requirements. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Grant Jones for site plan review to convert the existing gas service station located at 298 Ocean House Road to a gas station convenience store be deemed approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised per the town engineer's letter dated September 13, 2007. Two, that the central island be reduced in width on the applicant's property from 11 feet Excuse 10 inches. Paul. Yes, Barbara. I have a question here. Sure. These have already been done on the plans. Do we still need to include them here? Well, they've been done on the plan that's hung over there. Not yet. But they've never been submitted to staff for review. Right. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay, Robert. Thank you. Two, that the central island be reduced in width on the applicant's property from 11 feet 10 inches to 5 feet from the back of the sidewalk. Three, that the benches shown on the plan be eliminated. Four, that the dumpster location be moved 25 feet to the south. Five, that the planting islands in front of the store be changed to a rectangular shape. Six, that a six foot wide should side. Be, should be five foot. 
Should that be a five-foot sidewalk? I thought that's, that's what we had agreed to. That's the board's call. I did put in my memo a suggestion that we adhere to the six-foot wide standard. In oh, order I missed that. To, I, know, I know that you talked about five feet, and I drafted it at six feet, and certainly you can amend it back to five feet. Um, what do your plans show now? This plan here shows five feet. It's jo what's Johnson's? In there? All the other sidewalks are six feet. Johnson's is six feet. Because yeah. we've we've tried to be consistent with the six foot standard in front of the community center at six feet. Um, you know, we do have a, a project that's under design where it's gonna be six feet. In front out here, land trust is six feet. I believe I, I'm not gonna guarantee that because that wasn't even that's really a pathway. It isn't the concrete. Maybe that one small section that connects with Johnson should be six feet, but the way it's written. Yeah. Say it again. Maybe that one small section that, that connects to Johnson's should be six feet, the way it's written there. Just, just to call to the board's attention that the town center design standards and the purpose of the town center includes a statement to have a visual cohesiveness to the town center, and some of the visual cohesiveness is to. You know, establish a design standard like six feet, esplanade, street trees, pedestrian lighting, and then stick to that. But, you know, How'd we get on to five feet then anyway? Because we're trying to make room. We, the, right. the concern was that that, in order to be able to have two cars go, we felt we needed maximum distance. You, Oh. I know, would, would you rather have five or six feet? Is it a foot going to make a big difference in getting that car by there? I was suggesting we leave that part five feet, but the part on the southern side, so it's six feet since it connects with the six foot sidewalk. Well, this, this sidewalk right here is actually going to connect to what's basically a two foot sidewalk. Well, there's no sidewalk. Well, well, well there's just a, there's no yeah. It's a curve, yeah. Yeah. Okay, throw it's that. a wide well, curve. But the one foot's not going to make a difference in the size of the island. It's just the amount of grass. Right, right. just, just right. the amount of grass. The sidewalk is less grass. Right. What it, yeah, what it would do is it, it would take and narrow yeah. up this portion of it to where you'd have basically a, a strip of grass. You've got about seven feet there now. You're going to have about six feet. Would the applicant have any objections to going to six feet? No. no. Okay. Give it its draft. We can always discuss it after the fact and amend it if we have strong feelings. All right, sorry for the interruption. I just oh, remember. No problem. No problem. Number six okay. that a six foot wide sidewalk be installed in extending from the southerly curb cut to the south and separated from Route 77 by a minimum five foot wide esplanade. Seven that the lilacs proposed for the northerly side of the property be moved to the area of the westerly property line adjacent to the parking area and eight. There be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans have been revised to reflect the above conditions and approved by the town planner. Paul, do you want to add a number nine that indicates a change to the plans for the signage flip? Right? Yeah, I actually was going to ask you to add a condition on the signage. I had requested uh, the code officer to review the signage and, and get me a report. I haven't received that yet, so. I was going to suggest that there be a condition that, that the signage be reviewed and, and you know, revised as appropriate for the code officer to meet the sign ordinance. And I'd suggest that be the next to the last, whatever number it is, it be the next to the last condition. So the number eight is always the last condition. Okay, so eight would be nine and the new one would be eight. Okay, but in addition, I think you're right that we should uh, put in it that the the Joneses will be at the, the top of the building because the plan we got doesn't show that. Need both, then. If, with, with the board's permission, I, number eight would now read that the code officer review the side plans for compliance and uh, that the plans be revised to reflect the placement of, of, the, of the name Joneses above the main entrance. Good, good. Second? And I'll second. All in favor? Thank you, appreciate it. I have one question for the board and for Maureen. Do you require a mylar for signing? Okay. If you have any questions at all, call Maureen in. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you we'll very look much. forward to the lovely new building. Thank you.
The next item on our agenda, old business, also uh, Cardinal Lane private road approval. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent Suzanne Gabriel. <coughs> um, this proposal is uh, for the extension of Cardinal Lane, uh, which currently is a, uh, a private access way off of Cross Hill Road, uh, which extends 130 feet. This proposal uh, consists of the extension of Cardinal Lane for a total of 225 additional feet. Uh, the roadway has been designed as a 22 foot wide uh, roadway with two foot wide grass shoulders uh, within a 50 foot right of way. Turnaround and access easement has been uh, created at the end of the roadway. Um, the utilities the, will be extended um, to the end of the Cardinal Lane uh, consisting of the eight-inch public water, a uh, sanitary sewer force main, and underground electric telephone and cable TV. Uh, stormwater management, uh, as, we mentioned, as I mentioned during the site visit, uh, I had a meeting with Bob Malley and uh, Steve Harding, and basically we are following their recommendations. They've asked for us to install two catch basins at the intersection of Cardinal Lane and Cross Hill Road, um, which we have done on the latest revised plans. Um, and then for the balance of the property, uh, basically from the high point uh, to the rear, uh, to design drainage swales on either side of the roadway and to allow that to sheet runoff uh, into the vegetation. Uh, with the condition that if this road is ever um, considered for town acceptance, that the road shall be brought up to town standards. Uh, we received Steve Harding's uh, latest letter, um, and we've addressed all of his comments, although I understand you don't have copies of that, but the latest plans do reflect um, all of his comments. They basically, are, there are a couple notes uh, one was added to sheet two regarding the inspection of the roadway, and a note was added to sheet three uh, outlining the um, uh, deficiencies of the existing roadway, uh, which will be addressed in the construction of, of uh, Cardinal Lane. And then finally, uh, we are requesting a waiver, um, as we discussed during the site visit, the first uh, 50 feet of roadway uh, was constructed at 4% versus 3%. Um, so I, I believe that we need a waiver on that. And I don't know if we need a, a waiver on the open drainage system. Um, there. The waiver is not specifically mentioned in your memo, but it is shown on the plans as 4%. So I treated it as an implied. If you prove the plans, you prove the waiver. Mm -hmm. If you want to make a formal finding on that, you can do that as well. Everybody satisfied that it's just on the plans? We'll think about it while we have. John, you go ahead and finish. And then um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, why don't we hold that until we have a public hearing. The public hearing is now open. If anyone would like to speak to this project, please come to the podium and identify yourself. Seeing no member of the public who wants to come to the podium, we'll close the public hearing and open it up to the board for questions. Any, any feelings about the Four versus three, we all agreed it was immaterial. Right. 
Yeah, I, I'm just bar, uh, Barbara. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the four percent. I just think it should be a, 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 a finding of fact that we just acknowledge it, and somebody doesn't look at a plan five years from now and go, "Oh, why did they have four instead of three? I just, I, I think that would be appropriate. Fine. So we should add that in as, um, as a, uh, a finding of fact that the waiver has been granted. Okay. If there aren't any other questions, well, I actually. I've got a question for Maureen more than uh, more than Mr. Mitchell because I, I asked the same question the last time it came up and it's with regard to the open swale, the open drainage versus closed. <laughs> um, you know, open drainage systems from my personal experience and, and professional experience are real problems and they, they invite all sorts of stuff from invasive plants to um, deteriorating roadways. Maureen, is, is this a waiver issue? Um, it's a, they're yes. not asking for public. It's right. not asking you, for acceptance. You, you would be waiving it mm -hmm. because the, the way our ordinance is structured is, uh, well, there was a time way back when I was a lot younger when um, there were no standards for private roads. Right. And there was a problem with developers, some developers, being tempted to build a private road and as they're driving out of town and the paint's drying on the new houses, the new property owners petition the town council for acceptance of their road. They right. pay the same taxes everybody else pays. Why should they also have to pay to plow their road? And while in, in concept, the argument that you can't have your road accepted unless it meets all the standards that we require, mm -hmm. in practice, you know, when you have taxpayers asking you to help them out, there's a temptation to bite the bullet and accept the road even though it's been built to less than 100 percent standards. Right. So in order to avoid those situations, uh, the road standards were revised so that there's very little difference between a private, first of all, we created private road standards, mm -hmm. and second of all, the private road standards are almost identical to the public local road standard. Uh, the only difference is that you can have the road be gravel instead of paved. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put in a sidewalk, and you don't have to plant street trees. And okay. you know, part of the rationale behind that was that if a neighborhood then petitioned the council to accept the road, those kinds of things are not a break the bank kind of cost you could apportion to those property owners. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dig up the road to put those things back in. So. What has happened is that a private road that's designed to those standards meets the private road standards, you don't need a waiver. If you're asking to do something other than that, you do need a waiver. Um, we do require a 50-foot wide right-of-way. We require 18 inches of base gravel, three inches of pavement, two different types, mm -hmm. if you do pave. And the road standards also include a standard that says you're supposed to install under drain. However, um, it's been the town's practice to rely heavily on the advice of the public works director who is responsible for plowing and maintaining roads mm -hmm. and the town engineer who works very closely with the public works director to design roads so they don't become an undue maintenance burden. And those two people are saying that in this particular instance they don't have any problem with not putting in under drain. They're saying that they're putting in catch basins at the intersection of the new private road with, with Cross Hill so that any drainage coming off of Cardinal Lane will be caught by those catch basins and not sheet flow across Cross Hill Road. Right. I think there's an assumption that if this road does get petitioned for acceptance at some point, that then they might be able to apply the under drain standard. But that's really the status of where it is right now. So, you know. Thanks. The rest of Cross Hill is under drain? Except for Poplar Lane, mm -hmm. which is a little private road just down the street from here. And, you know, that was approved 10 years ago. That's open swale. That's, that's not closed. That has, yeah, that has open swales and it's private. Okay. Hmm. I think when we were out there looking at it, we all felt that in light of the town engineer and the um, Bob Nally, uh, that 
it was all right to leave it the way it yeah, was I didn't now. make that part of the story. No, so. because the, the flow of the water is going to go into the catch basins mm -hmm. from sort of where this lot is down to Crossville Road. And the rest of it, at this point, there's no plan for development. And it seemed to all of us, correct me if I'm wrong, that it was really an undue expense at this point to require that kind of development or that kind of infrastructure for this one lot. Is that correct? Yes. I have to wonder out loud then why we have private road standards that we decide not to adhere to. Well, I think that there, there are several, sometimes there are standards. I mean, I can remember an instance where we actually reduced the side, in fact, more than once a, of a road because of the trees and <laughs> So, you know, it, it's not, everything's not always cast in concrete. I mean, we need to follow the code. But sometimes there's a little bit of room to say, okay, this makes more sense than this does, so we don't unduly burden people, or we don't have to take down trees unnecessarily. Yeah, and I think to add to that, sometimes, you know, I think in this case, Mother Nature's, you know, grading of the, you know, the topography the way it is works in the benefit of the way this is. Uh, that's not always the case, so True. sometimes it's prudent to, you know, do things as, as they should be done to, to standards. Um, I do have a question in that regard. The, the town engineer has indicated in writing, and as I believe supported by uh, Bob Malley, that if the road is accepted at some point in the future, uh, that it would be upgraded to, to, to curb and drainage. Uh, is that, is that something that needs to be noted in the findings of factor on the plan? If it, if it was, I didn't, I didn't see it. Uh, we've, we've acknowledged that um, understanding. We haven't put a note on the plan, but we will okay. if, if the board wants us to. But we have acknowledged that in our latest uh, submission letter okay. to the board. Is that the letter dated August 30th? Excuse is that me? The, is that the letter dated August 30th, or is there a... No, there's a letter September... September 13th, okay. uh, we just received comments and we responded the next day. Okay. Um, uh, and I said... It's actually it, in here too. Excuse me? It's in the August 30th letter. Oh, it is, okay. Well, the um, acknowledgement in the August 30th letter says that when and if Cardinal Lane is extended, a reassessment shall be made to determine if a closed drainage system is warranted. Right, and I, and I also said in my September 13th letter under drainage design, the applicant understands and agrees that if Cardinal Lane is ever considered for acceptance, the road shall be improved to town standards. Okay, that's better than this. Okay, thank you. Yep, I'm good with that. I, I, I hadn't seen that in September 13th, so thank you. Again, this is kind of the same situation where we had last plan. Uh, the applicant was willing to submit revised plan asking us to review them and, and I made the call that um, they weren't submitted by the deadline and it was insufficient time for staff to review them and then get comments back to the board a second time. So the board wants to proceed in a different manner and have to so instruct me. Do you think we can just add these into the conditions then? for this project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does somebody, uh, is, are there any other questions, first of all? Then do we have a motion to consider adding the waiver for the um, four versus three is it degree difference and for the um, the way it was just stated uh, about if the road is ever upgraded uh, or is, if the road is ever, uh, yes. Um, the town engineer's letter, paragraph three, it states, at any point in the future should the road be considered for acceptance, it is the public works director in our position that the road would need to be improved to town standards. So I believe that oh, if you um, approve the condition with the, the motion with condition one that the plans be revised per the town engineer's letter, that would cover getting that particular note onto the plans. Fine. Okay. But we do need to put in there that we 
have granted a waiver. Yes. So do we have a motion for the board to consider? <clears throat> Barbara, motion for the board to consider uh, findings of fact. One, Suzanne Gabriel is requesting private road approval for Cardinal Lane, a previously approved private access way located off Cross Hill Road, to create frontage for a new lot three, which requires review for compliance with section 16-3-2 road design and construction standards. Two, the town engineer has recommended design improvements to the private road. Three, that a waiver be granted to allow a 4% slope uh, instead of the standard 3%. Four, the application substantially complies with the subdivision road standard section 16-2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Suzanne Gabriel for private, ro private road approval for Cardinal Lane a previously approved private access way located off Cross Hill Road to create frontage for a new lot three be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised for the town engineer's letter dated September 10th, 2007. And two, that there be no recording of plans, alteration of the site, or issuance of a building permit until the plans have been revised per the above conditions and a performance guarantee for the road improvements has been posted in the form and the amount acceptable to the town manager and town attorney. Do we need to have something in there about a waiver being granted for the open soil drainage? Isn't that kind of covered in the town engineer's letter? Oh, we did talk about including that as a condition. You could include it as a condition, or you could just leave the finding of fact in place to recognize that it wasn't an accident that plans show 4% rather than 3% slope. Your choice. All you happen with where you have it? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Or we should have a second first. Okay. okay. More discussion? Everyone in favor? For the record, I don't understand. Okay. Five, four, one abstention. Passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> hey, um, Diane Moskowitz and Steve Mc Scott McMullen are requesting an after the fact resource protection permit to fill 4191 square feet of wetland and pond for landscaping. Uh, the applicants, the application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-8-3. The applicants have requested that this be tabled until the October meeting and in order to avoid a scheduling conflict with their attorney. Is there any discussion about this? If not, we have a motion for the board to consider. Jim? Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Diane Maskwitz and Scott McMullen uh, for an after the fact resource protection permit to fill 4191 square feet of wetland and pond for landscaping located at 221 Fickett Street be tabled to the regular October 16th, 2007 meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. All in favor? Okay, now we go on to new business, um, old Seapoint subdivision amendment. Bob, do you want to introduce yourself? And Good evening, I'm Bob Metcalf of Mitchell and & Associates and uh, representing Sally Crockett, the applicant, and Neil Williams. And while Maureen's warming this up, Neil would like to make a quick statement before I actually go into the presentation. Good evening, my name is Neil Williams and I live at 53 Longfellow Drive. 
uh, although Sally is really the sole applicant in this particular matter, shall things go forward, we would tend to build a home on that particular property together. Um, I have to divulge that I am full-time police chief here in Cape Elizabeth and uh, did not attend any of the staff reviews of this particular project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And based on the uh, discussion at your last workshop session, we volunteered to be a guinea, say, a guinea pig are. for your uh, first PowerPoint presentation. Peter's very happy. And he made it for a time. <laughs> I came here just to be here. Well, I was <laughs> sitting out there and going, is he not coming um, tonight? Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the first of many, quite frankly, but go ahead. Good. Uh, Old Sea Point Road uh, was an amended subdivision uh, by the board back in 2003 to create two lots, additional lots. Uh, let's see, where's the, I promised Maureen I'd make sure I put this up the ceiling first and not at you folks. Uh, when the uh, last time the plan was before you in 2003 uh, for an amendment was to create these two lots, lots one and two. And uh, as uh, we said, the applicant, Sally, is going to be developing this particular lot right here. And in the last approval for the, by the board on this project required that the first building permit issued for any lot fronting on Old Sea Point Road was to bring the road up to the standard of an 18-foot wide travelway based on the town standards. Uh, what we're here for tonight is to ask for a waiver or relief of that requirement to construct a 18-foot wide travelway. Uh, what we have, um, the applicant has met before we actually submitted the application for workshop session and uh, had a meeting with Chief McGoldrick on two occasions in June, on the 14th and on the 19th, I believe, uh, 29th, I believe it was, to discuss uh, what improvements uh, we're proposing to make on this. And essentially, the major improvements are down on Old, old Ocean House and Old Sea Point Road proposing to expand the uh, radius points coming into the project to 30 feet. Right now, they're just a little less than 15 feet. To extend the, two, extend the culvert in both directions in order to obtain uh, the appropriate fill in order to pave that area. There are two existing mailboxes that are on, and actually, on the north side of uh, Old C point road. I've got to mix up between old and old here in a minute. Uh, what we're proposing to do is to take those two mailboxes and move them to the south side. Also, as you probably saw, and, and I'll go back to this again, the existing vegetation somewhat blocks the site distance in looking to the north and also looking to the south. And combination of the pruning and or removal of vegetation in order to improve the site distance in that particular is that in location. The, is that in the right of way or on your client's property? The actually it's within the public right of way. This is the lot line right here. Yeah. And this is within the public right of way. I believe there's a there's an existing water main that runs down through here. Um, so that vegetation is right out into the public right of way. Uh, and it's probably in on the north side, it's probably anywhere from 8 to 10 feet tall and pretty much comes right up to the edge of the existing pavement uh, at Old Ocean House. Uh, it's not quite as prominent on the south side, but it still requires additional uh, removal of some material in order to enhance that site distance. And the site distance to the north is a little about 800 feet plus or minus. And then your site distance to the south to the curve is roughly 300 plus or minus. Uh, pretty much you can see a vehicle as it's heading towards town on the right hand side. You can pretty much pick it up. Uh, let's see, got to get used to this thing too. Right about just at that beginning of the curve where you can actually pick up the height. In terms of the other improvements uh, that were part of the original approval was to construct a, a T. Uh, turnaround in this location up in here. There was an easement reserved in order to construct that. It was not constructed uh, at this point, and that would be an additional improvement that would be made as part of this application. Uh, to address vehicles passing one another along Old Sea Point Road, proposing to put an 8 foot by 20 foot gravel pullout in this location here. So there's people coming in and out, there's ability to pull out 
And I'm going to take you through some other shots that I've done, uh, taken here, showing the existing conditions to present the board with what this roadway actually looks like. Pardon me, Mike. Pick up Mike. No, it's here. The, uh, this is approximately 120 feet coming into the, the roadway. And what we're looking at is you get the 12 foot wide pavement. You've got a side shoulder on the left hand side. It's, it ranges based on where this vegetation comes in this location from six feet. On the other side, it's about four feet. This side slopes off at about a 20, almost a 30% slope on the right hand side. The left hand side is between 20 and 25 and it varies as you're coming in along this point in here. Uh, the trees that you see in this location up here, uh, there have been a number of them that have been identified as a hazard. Uh, a couple of them, at least two of them are almost dead. And the others are, you know, pretty much along the way. And those trees are going to wind up being removed as part of the, the development in here. So you're saying the existing is 12? Correct. It's, this is the It looks like it's less. Well, it's, it is 12. Okay. And it's just the graphics on here was kind of difficult uh, inserting those. Quite things, scale. Yeah. Sure. It's 12 feet, okay? And as you start to move up the crest, uh, the left-hand side, this will be about three to four feet. The right-hand side, this will be about six to eight feet. And the red dot that actually shows up now on the plan is roughly showing where that area is back in here. Yep. Uh, the turnoff, actually, be located roughly up in this area in here where it flattens out a little bit. So that would occur approximately in this location. You're looking in there. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I guess I should have gone with the, the dots here. I came over this afternoon to kind of work with Maureen to work this thing out, and I didn't realize that uh, in my office they had actually changed the dots back where they were supposed to be. And this <laughs> isn't exactly correct as far as the dots. The plans and everything are right, and the, the photographs of where we said they'd be taken. So, And then... This is uh, standing with my back to the Mills property at the uh, Southwest driveway. And this is looking back down towards Old Ocean House. And as you can see, the area is relatively flat up in this side and here, and the same thing on the opposite side. This is about eight feet plus or minus to the right, and it's between eight and 10 feet on the left-hand side. And just about where I'm showing the, the pointer right now, <coughs> which is roughly in here, is where they're proposing to actually construct the driveway uh, for building their house, and their house is going to be located roughly in this location up in here. Uh, I know that we received comments from Post, from Steve Harding, as well as uh, Bob Malley, and I don't know whether those are part of your packets. Uh, we did receive them, I believe it was Thursday afternoon, and tried to get the responses pulled together uh, in order to submit them. Uh, I know the board usually doesn't take information on the night of a meeting. I do have copies of the letters with my responses if you want, and I can walk you through in terms of addressing some of the comments that were raised, and that's uh, the board's pleasure. I have a question. Sure. This was previously approved as an 18-foot roadway. It Correct. was never done. Correct. Uh, and now the standards are even more. Now they're 22 feet. Correct. Why, what is the rationale for not wanting it to be more than the 12 now that you're coming back to us again? Mm -hmm. It is even less than what was approved, which is not up to standard. Exactly. And I think a lot of it goes back as I've taken you through what this um, character, what this road looks like. It is only serving, come on, respond. Oop, one too many. The character of this road, while it's technically 900 feet to where the turnaround is in here, up to the first driveway, which is the Sulquist driveway and the driveway uh, that Sally is talking about constructing, is a little over 600 feet. Uh, there are only four homes on this. Uh, the character would drastically change having to pull this out to 18 feet wide with the side slopes on there in order to work with the grades coming off on either side. 
that it would look more like a boulevard coming in, you know, a wide boulevard coming up through here and, as I said, change a lot of the character. Uh, you are only looking at four homes in here. Uh, the amount of traffic coming out of here is going to be negligible in terms of, you know, conflicts of someone coming in and coming out at the same time. Uh, during the winter months, obviously, it would be the more difficult time, but given the width of the shoulder areas, uh, the, the snow can be plowed back and wing back that you can maintain at least three feet, if not more, on either side. Uh, that would bring it up to about an 18-foot wide cross-section anyway, in terms of openness. Uh, and that is, you know, it's really based on a lot of the character is not wanting to have to increase this from the 12 feet up to the 18 feet. And from a public safety standpoint, by having put in the, uh, the pull-off areas, uh, we feel as though it's an adequate area to address that. The upper areas are really flat on either side, uh, in addition to the pull-off area that we're talking about. Is, is this, um, it's privately plowed, is that correct? Pardon me? Privately plowed? Yes, it is. And does your client control that remaining lot, the remaining unbuilt lot? No, they do not. Okay. They simply own the one. They own lot one. She, own, she owns that outright. If somebody came in with a, wanted to put something on that other house at, oh, a lot. and wanted to build a wider road, how would that work, Maureen? Depends on what you approve. Okay. I mean, if, if they just wanted to build a wider road, um, as long as they got the, I mean, they share the ownership of the road right. with the other people. So as long as the other people, if they wanted to do it at their own cost and right. the other people agreed, they, they could just do it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's, but it's not like they have to come back for approval. I, I don't see, I don't see why they would um, unless they're going to be creating stormwater problems. Maureen, have we ever approved a road this narrow? Yes, you have. You know, I, I personally feel like I'm shooting in the dark because I would like to see it before I make a decision about this. I don't know how anybody else yeah, feels yeah, about it. I'd like to see it before I make a decision. I don't know how anybody else feels because this was approved for an 18-foot road which was accepted at that time and now four years later we're asking for a reduction which is even further from what the new code is or what the current code is rather than what it was at that time and I would like to at least see it I mean if nobody else agrees with me and they want to go ahead and approve it that's fine but I would like to see it how does everybody else feel? Well, yeah, I have, I guess, some of the same concerns. Um, Bob, you said you had a letter from Steve Harding. Yes. Sort of um, approving it, but the, letter, the only letter I have here from Steve Harding says, we do not believe the turnout will be an effective means to allow vehicles to pass during the winter months. I and did not say, huh? I didn't say that Steve had approved it. Sorry. I did not say that Steve had approved it in his memo. I just said I had responses okay. to both Steve's and okay. to Bob's comment. So, okay. have those been those been submitted? No, I received them late Thursday, and I was going to try and get them over on Friday. And I was told your packets had already gone out. So, I see. I brought the letters this evening, in case the board wanted me to walk you through what our responses were to Steve's letter as well as uh, Bob's. Were you involved with the original plan, Bob? Original I personally was not. John Mitchell was involved in the, the last amendment that created the two lots. I just, I, and maybe this is only tangential, but you know, reading about something that it was approved for 18 foot, mm -hmm. built for 12 foot, and there was never any application for a waiver or anything like that, I don't understand what happens that. You know, how does it happen that way that you? Well, the road was built before the last amendment came in to create the two lots. It was already existing as a 12-foot wide roadway. Right, but it was yeah. in 2003 it was approved as an 18-foot. Right. No, no. That was a condition on the plan. Yeah, there was no, there was no, excuse me, in 2003 when it was approved as yeah. 18 yeah. feet, 
there was no action on the road to trigger okay, construction up until this point. And okay. so this applicant would, and, and they, what they're proposing to do would trigger the 18th okay. construction. Thank you. So they're now saying, can you rethink that? Okay. Basically that condition puts the onus on one lot owner to bring that up to. to so the app, your applicant would have to pay for the entire road to be widened? Yes. Unless they had a buyer for the other one too. I mean, the existing, there's a two existing. Right, that's what I mean. The prior, no, the person who came in 2003 who agreed to build it to 18 feet owned two, both those lots. At that time. And has since sold one to the applicant. Okay. And whoever pulls the next building permit was the one that was going to be required to build the road up to 18 feet. So those, the two houses that are on the road now, they don't have to because Because they were there already. It's, it's really difficult. I mean, if someone is required to build a private road to a specific standard, and then they get a building permit for their house, and there's no performance guarantee for the private road, and then they occupy their house, it's very difficult at that point to go back and say, oops, you didn't build the road correctly. Please fix it now. So the people who are there now... And, and, I don't, and to be, you know, to be honest, I don't think any of the people who were there now were there when the road was built. So, I don't, you know, there's nobody there that was, that you can point to and say, it was your fault, fix it. Okay. What, what are the prospects for this going through anywhere, Marina? What's, what's on the other side of, of where it is? Route 77. Well, that's pretty much it then. I mean, meaning there's no for the possibility of additional lots. Coming. There is possibility for additional lots. There, because, uh, within what we're seeing on the plan right here? Or some Well, the lot to the north of Old Sea Point Road mm -hmm. is bigger than what you're seeing. I can go back. That would be helpful, Bob. Right there. So, I believe that's the lot you're talking about, Maureen? Yes. So that has based on size and other dimensions, the potential for further development. Yes. But of course, they would have to come back at this point for further amendment in order to do that. Is that correct? No, probably, but it depends on how they develop it. If they split it once, wait five years. Right, and where they get access, and, you know, I really don't want to go into how to avoid. I understand. Okay. Please. <laughs> this just say there's, it's no, I'm, I'm asking yeah. because... Maureen, do you have a copy of the original plans? Was, was the roadway built just to fall the sub-base of a shoulder that's... Good question. And there was... There's, you want to put those yeah. pictures back? I saw this plan when I was newly hired back in 1990. Okay. And at that time, it was a, a property that had been taken over by the bank. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there's been a lot of inspections after the road was constructed. so. I'm, I'm not, a, I could not guarantee what's in there. And I don't think there's any records that the town has that could tell you what's there. Okay. I share Barbara's opinion. I, even though I drive by it almost every day, I, I think I'd like to take a closer look at this. Um, obviously, the, I, I do have some sensitivity to one lot owner being, res being responsible for all of this. However, just as a throw out thought, um, this the proposed applicant is the first lot you know maybe there's an opportunity to widen the road to 18 feet for yeah. half the road require it somebody else comes along at some other time to do that but we can consider that at some point but I, I, I agree I think I'd like to go out and take a closer look at this you all said Paul I am um, I guess I'm I have a mind that Barbara and Paul I agree with Barbara <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not prepared to approve it tonight, so I, I want to go out there and take a look at it before I'm committed one way or the other. I mean, I, I have some real concerns, uh, and I think, you know, some of those concerns may be alleviated by taking a look. So I, my thought would be to table this till next month, set, schedule a site walk, and since we're, s I mean, the only other question is, even though there's no requirement for a public hearing, is that correct? We could, since we're going to, table it till next month anyway yep. set it up that way and that yep. way we've got no other issues that would be good and, and I think if we see it we might be able to talk 
mm -hmm. with you and yes. see if there's some alternatives sort of going perhaps halfway where the applicant doesn't have to bear the cost of everything. You know, but without actually looking at it. I know a picture's worth a thousand words, <laughs> yeah. but I like to stand on the site and really see what we're talking about more than just having a photograph of it. Uh, the, the other question before we go on was there was something that was brought up about, um, about a, about a, a, uh, affecting the wetlands in order to extend new water services. Is that still a question? <coughs> for um, what Steve Harding was referring to is when this was approved back in 2003, the public water to serve lots one and two being extended along this portion of lot uh, one up to serve lot two as well. The wetland area is this section right down in here. And in order to install that water line, roughly to be, if you will, temporary impact of the wetland in order to install the, wa uh, the water lines. And rough calculations, I've gone conservative and said to do a 10 foot wide swath of disturbance. We're looking at about 1,500 square feet of wetland impact uh, for the overall length that we have to go, which is about 140 feet through the wetland in that location in order to install but then, it. Then it's restored. After yes. It's not what you do is you permanent. Save, you, you save the wetland soil material when you backfill and you regrade, and then you overseed with a wetland seed mix. Okay, so that is not a, a question or a problem? No, what we need to do is we need to file an updated NRPA permit, and that has been completed. It just hasn't been submitted yet. And that's a, it was a permit by rule, which is a 14-day turnaround, I believe it is. So am I hearing from everybody that we would like to schedule a site walk and take a look at this and see if we can come up with some reasonable solution by all looking at it together? Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see when you're conven when it's convenient for you and when it's convenient for us. We don't have to make a motion. We have to close out the discussion. Okay. When would I'm going to be gone for a week? But no. when would everybody like to do this? Do we have enough daylight at the end of the day to do it, or is it? We can go on to six. I'm leaving um, Thursday and coming back Wednesday. Wednesday, September 26th. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're you're busy Thursday at the windmill session. Yes. 7 o'clock in the morning. 7.30. I know, but we have to leave at 7. <laughs> the, um, how about right before the workshop on the 2nd? Okay. You can do that. Yep. And, and it may be the only opportunity, but what you have tried to do in the past is the submission deadline for the October meeting is September 28th. So if you do it October 2nd, the applicant won't have the benefit of your comments at the, at the site walk to um, revise their plans. But that spares us a third. Get together during the month. And is there a way to extend that in that way if there are comments, especially given the issues here? Well, I mean, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, we can extend it. And I, and I don't do that lightly. It's just it either doubles up our work and or doubles up their work. And since we're trying to avoid another meeting night or another meeting. Well, we're probably going to have another site walk. It's going to be a long one. What you need to keep in mind is usually when the applicant submits their plans on a Friday, right. then Monday I send them out to staff. Friday, the following Friday, we have a staff meeting. So if you're holding a okay. site walk on a Tuesday night, then, you know, you need to give the applicant at least a day, I would say at least a day, <laughs> to revise the plans. So you're talking nice. about getting plans in Thursday for a Friday we're, review. We're up to the so, fourth. Yeah, you see what I mean? No, I'm, I'm It's just, it, it'll be challenging, but I will do what we can. The alternative is to do it earlier, right? Do the site walk right like now. This week. This week. Right. When is Bar you leaving this week? Bar you know, I, I can go out and look at it myself. I mean, you. Well, I, I, you know, given the issues here, I think it, if we can all make a date, then I'll make a date. Okay, well, I'm, I'm October, leaving. October 2nd. I'm leaving Thursday morning, and I'm not coming back until the 26th. So, I'll be gone for a week. Tomorrow week. And we do have the windmill at the, the wind. wind Generator is at, and it is at 7:30 in the morning. So that's next. That's a week. When is that again? Thursday, September 27th. 
We could do it Friday the 28th. Friday the 28th is a submission date, but we can push it back. Yeah, if you're, if you're, I mean, it's just the earlier you do it, the less I have to push things back. And it's just, this is one of those issues where you really do want Plan. your own engineer and public works director to have a Looking chance at, at it. Yeah, That's definitely. Yeah. How does that work for you, Bob? Which date again? Friday the 28th. Which Friday the 28th? Uh, I'll defer everybody else because you're all. Well, do you either the beginning of the day or the end of the day, I'm thinking. Can we do early in the morning? We better do it at the beginning because then we're, we're back to the same problem, and yeah, that's I a mean, Friday. Can we, so do, can we do early in the day? 7.30? 7, 6, 5, whatever. Oh, my goodness. Sunrise? <laughs> well, that's an issue now. Yeah, Maybe. sunrise means 6.30. Well, Friday 6.24 Friday today. Enough to see, yeah. 6.24 Six, today, so. 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. In the morning? Well, if I have to, I will. <laughs> I just want to make it clear that I'm not going to look very pretty at 7 o'clock. I get in from Kansas the night before at 11, so. All right, so Friday the 28th. At 7 a.m.? 7 a.m. Okay. September 28th. September 28th. There you go. Marine, will you send us all reminders? <laughs> Peter, can you send us a Maureen has to do that too. Will you call me at 6 a.m. <laughs> to make sure I'm going to wake me up? Yeah, really? <laughs> I can pick you up that. We're lucky. Yeah. That's a little may have to. Yeah. Okay. Then I. Seven o'clock, two days in a row. I'll just use me. Never mind. Okay. Motion for the board to consider. Um, I have a motion for the board to consider, uh, based on materials, uh, that based on materials and plans submitted in the facts presented the application of, uh, Ms. Sally Crockett for an amendment to the previously approved old C point road subdivision be tabled to the October 16th, 2007 meeting of the planning board. And I don't add yet. Are we going to, are we going to have a site, uh, public hearing on it? One set, um, I think that's what the, oh yeah. Yes. Think at, at which time a public hearing will be held. Is, that's part of my motion. Second. I'll second. second. Any more discussion? All in favor? See you at 7 o'clock on the 20th. <laughs> See you then. Thanks. Thank you. Barbara. Hey, Bob, thank you. Three minute break. A three minute break has been and, requested. And I, know, and I know Owens. Uh, and I know Owens for three minute break. Second. So I'm in favor. And, and, and I know Owens was taking notes on, on how to do it. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> that was nice. You mean, yep. I brought backup. I got to tell you, this is the first time I've seen a clearly in a long time. No kidding. I mean, I've only been on here since January. That was beautiful. Recognize it if it is. All right. Ah, yeah. That's good. So, that's a good sign. It's too big. Remember, what's the problem? They were too big to email. I did. Yes. One of them was was okay, but the other ones were one was like ten meg or something. So like, like, on. That's why it's always good not to be first. One not the twelfth, and the third. We get the detail. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Eastman Meadows, that right. whole folder. In three innings. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let, me, let me look at my schedule because. Uh, did, you now, did he insert it in PowerPoint? Or was it just. He had made it PowerPoint. Yeah, we can meet that for them. Yeah, it was already in PowerPoint. Well, oh. well you yeah. don't have to do that. Who's going? Oh, I can just click the image. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So you can just click on whatever you want. Oh, okay. You get this guy. Yep, I got yeah, one just that. like that. Great. Okay. Those are great. So oh, perfect. You know, and you That's know how perfect. to use this thing. And yeah. I can just okay. pick up my phone. If I don't, I'm going to ask for help. Can I work? No, I'm going to mess up. Well, let's check. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. 
it's very different. Than, very different. <laughs> Because you don't want to get there at 7.30 if you don't have to be there till 9. No, no, before, no, Maureen. It's 7.30 to 9.30 is the program. 7 to 7.30 is the registration. Yeah, it's off exit and Burnham Road. Yeah, Forest Avenue. Okay. Well, Peter, we can meet at Santa Ana Cruz on Forest Avenue. Never mind, we'll talk about it. Meeting's back in session. Okay. Last item on our agenda is the Eastman Meadows subdivision. And Owens, will you introduce yourself and introduce the um, project, please? I would be glad to. Thank you and uh, good evening. My name is Owens McCullough, a civil engineer with Sebago Technics. Uh, here tonight on behalf of Wiley Enterprises, LLC. Uh, with me tonight is Joel Fitzpatrick from Wiley Enterprises, if uh, the board had any specific questions of the applicant. Uh, also with me is Nate Taylor, a design engineer from our firm, um, who uh, actually worked on uh, quite a bit of the plans, too. Uh, we're here tonight uh, to present a, at a completeness level review a 40, uh, actually it's 46 uh, condominiums and then there's an existing farmhouse uh, that we'll keep for a total of 47 units. And before I uh, get going, I just want to talk through a few minutes of sort of where we started and, and where, how we got to the point that we're at here. Uh, Wiley Enterprises acquired a parcel of land right here approximately a year ago that, in, in fee ownership. They actually own that. This is Eastman Road uh, right here. Um, Sawyer Road's over here, and then Spurwink's back over here. In addition, um, as uh, Joel was uh, putting together the plans and considering what to do with the, with the property, he also became aware that the Sprague Corporation owned a parcel of land here. And Joel spoke to the Sprague Corporation and was able to secure a purchase and sell agreement uh, on that piece of land so that there's a total combined property of about 40 acres. And, and kind of what's unique about this parcel of land is all this area that you see next to it is open space. Um, I believe this piece is about 79 acres or so, part of the Winnick Woods project. Uh, there's uh, the, some state and federal park land that's over here. And then there's uh, some land trust land here. And then I believe uh, there's open spaces uh, with town-owned easements in this area here. And there's a number of trails uh, through the property. Uh, this, the trails that you see up here were based upon some uh, earlier plan infor information that I was able to obtain from Maureen um, to help us, guide us on how we might connect into that trail network. But what uh, Wiley Enterprises saw that was unique about this property was a chance to uh, do kind of a planned uh, development and then integrate quite a bit of open space in with the existing open space that surrounds the property. And the dark green you see here is all proposed open space that would then be made part of the whole overall project. We're actually proposing over 60% open space as part of this project. Uh, I believe the ordinance requires a minimum of 40 percent, so uh, we're actually able to integrate quite a bit uh, more open space into this. Uh, when Joel acquired this piece of land um, a year ago, we began looking at what various options uh, he might be able to, to uh, develop this, this land. The first option in his mind and what his preference is and what is here today um, is a condominium uh, project, and it's not it, it's a unique project in that it's targeted towards the 55 and older uh, group, which uh, gets up into the aging baby boomers and 
folks that some of the folks who are looking to maybe transition out of uh, single family homes into uh, a condominium where they have less um, maintenance, less needs to uh, take care of land. Uh, there would be an association that would take care of the roads, the landscaping, um, the exterior of the building. So all you're responsible for is the interior of the buildings. And this is a concept that I've worked on on some other projects in uh, Kennebunk and Gorham and Topsom and uh, Wells uh, for a company called Casper Zach Land Bank, Inc. And they've been quite successful at uh, hitting this market sector. And Joel independently came to a decision that he thought this might be a good use for this piece of land in Cape Elizabeth, especially since uh, there isn't uh, really any sort of a housing in this area uh, or this type of housing uh, in, in Cape Elizabeth. The other option that he had explored was the potential to uh, develop single family residential lots. And this zone is RB, so the um, average lot size I think would be 15,000 square feet um, in this zone. So uh, the density certainly supported um, a number of residential houses, but after looking at the options and the layout, Joel felt strongly that. Um, a condominium approach would be uh, the best approach for this parcel and, and for the town, he hopes. So we came to the planning board um, at a very sketch plan level, concept plan <coughs> level, several months ago, uh, presented this concept, and then since that time we've really gone through all the detailed engineering, the boundary surveys, the wetland mapping, the high intensity soil surveys, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the utility designs, coordination with uh, the town engineer, public works director, and town planner, and, uh, and what you see here today um, is the development that, that we've come up with. And I'm going to move on to the next slide, which sort of takes us from, say, 50,000 feet and zooms right into the, into the development area. And if anybody would like to go back to this, just let me know, and I'll, uh, I can always uh, go back to it. This is a little closer look at the site plan. Uh, and the way the, the design is set up is two entrances off of Eastman Road. Uh, the first one is Tenninger Lane, which is this location here. It's a road of about uh, 1,500 feet in length. It's been designed to the uh, town road standards, 22 feet of pavement, uh, five foot esplanade, and sidewalk uh, around the site. We've designed it with a 50 foot right of way uh, the intent was is to uh, provide the condominium uh, with the option that as it develops um, to potentially offer it to the town for road acceptance, uh, this entrance here. Uh, Joel is at this point uh, unsure whether that would be in the best interest of the association, or, uh, but it is designed to that standard, uh, will be constructed to that standard so that that uh, provides the association with some flexibility and options. The second uh, loop is Phoebe's Way, uh, which is this one right here, and that's about 900 feet in length. Uh, that piece of road would, uh, does not have a traditional right-of-way. It would remain private uh, at, uh, for perpetuity. Um, it, is been it has been designed to the same dimensional standards as the public right-of-way, so 22 feet of pavement, uh, five-foot esplanade, and five-foot sidewalk. The design also integrates into it street trees at 40-foot spacing along the roadway per the town's ordinance requirements. The private way also includes street trees following that same design criteria. The layout um, of the facility has been, been laid out and designed to try and uh, provide some looped roads and then a, a court over here in this location. Uh, with a series of either duplexes or quadruplex units. Uh, the most of, I believe it's 19 duplexes and then there's two quadruplexes. The quadruplexes are in that location and that location there. Everything else has been designed as duplex units. 
Uh, the development will include uh, all public utilities, underground utilities, uh, public water, uh, sewer, electric telephone, cable services, um, all underground. Uh, the sewer is actually ends, I'm going off the screen a little bit, but uh, down in here with the gravity sewer. And what uh, the applicant will be doing is constructing a gravity sewer system within the development down to a pump station that would be part of the association. That pump station will then have a force main running up along the side of, the, of Eastman Road up to where the gravity system is. And I believe it's 23, 2400 feet uh, up to that location. And then as we go along, we were, we've met with staff and uh, spoke with Public Works. And what we will be doing as we come along with this force main is uh, the town's asked us to stub out uh, services to the abutting houses so that uh, there would be that opportunity for them to connect because everybody else is on septic systems um, in that area. Uh, the town has a, uh, um, has a uh, will contribute, I think is up to $3,500, is that right, Joel? $3,000 to the, um, for each service to, the, to reimburse the developer for that, but it makes perfect sense to install those services while you're in the street coming up through it now. Public water ends right here at our entrance. Uh, we will be extending the water main down to our lower entrance, and then we will have a looped system all the way through the entrance. And, uh, electric and telephone will then run up through the development uh, all underground. Um, as part of the project, uh, we are, as, as indicated in the application, seeking a major subdivision approval and a resource protection permit. Uh, the major subdivision is obviously for the, the number of units that we're proposing. And then the resource protection uh, permit is for, uh, there's an existing road that comes into the site here. This location also happens to be the most, uh, most suitable for site distance and access into the site. So we'll be reconstructing that existing access road and improving upon it in this area. Uh, Mark Hampton and Mark Hampton Associates who mapped all the wetlands on this site identified an RP1 wetland over in this area which has a, a 250 foot setback and that runs right along through here and it has a very small wedge that comes across that existing access road in the area that we're going to be rebuilding and improving so that's one of the reasons we're asking for the RP1 permit. The other reason is, is there are two ponds on this property a very small one in this location. They're both farm, man-made farm ponds and then a larger pond in this location. Uh, I'll start with the smaller pond. Uh, that pond is going to be uh, reconfigured uh, for a uh, soil filter, filtration uh, facility for stormwater management. Uh, there'll be a trail that will come in off the trailhead and around it. It's really part of the new LID, the low impact design measures. And what it is is it's a very shallow um, a very shallow detention pond that actually drains out. It'll have plantings in the bottom of it. And the water comes into that pond, filters through a soil medium, and gets collected in an underdrain after it's been cleaned and then uh, discharged uh, from, from the, the pond. The second pond, which is, is, exists, is a, is a nice, it's a nice sized pond. Uh, we're actually proposing not to uh, impact it with the, ex well, with the exception of a small area. There's a little uh, kind of a tip of the, of the pond up in this area. And what we're proposing to do is impact a small area here. But what we impact here, we're actually going to enlarge in another location. The net effect is that pond actually gets a little bit bigger. And this area up here has started to overgrow um, and grow in and uh, what we're going to do is clean that area out too. This is, this is very nice down in here, but we'll work on the upper end. Then the last item for the uh, resource protection permit is uh, as part of our proposal, the applicant is proposing to construct two trails. One trail that starts from Eastman Road that comes along here around the pond and then connects over into the uh, Winnick Woods open space. The second trail comes from um, the road coming in, oh, I'm sorry, it comes from right here, 
down along the back of these units. <clears throat> and then it goes across the wetland right here, which is an RP2 wetland. And then another small crossing here. And then it too comes back and connects into the open space. And what we would like to do at these two wetland crossings is construct the boardwalk to get across those. And that technically is an alteration or an impact to the wetland. Um, and we will actually have to file a, um, a, a uh, well, we're below the uh, 4,300 square foot for the, ex for the DEP, so it, it doesn't actually require a DEP permit, but, uh, but it does require a permit from the town, I believe, as part of your resource protection. Um, so we are asking for that in that location. Um, a couple of other uh, features of, on the project, the units uh, that will be constructed, and I'm going to go change graphics real quick and uh, go to a, um, a rendering of the uh, building While itself. you're changing that, Owens, I just wanted to point out that uh, the force main that you'll be constructing with the stubs to mm -hmm. the abutting property owners, there will be no requirement for the property owners <coughs> to connect to those. They're being required by the town for the applicant to install for future planning purposes. There, there's no plan at this point that I'm aware of for anyone no. <laughs> to require the people who have septic systems who, to connect up to the sewer system. It's, it's just being put in there so that we won't have to go in and open the sewer line if there's a desire in the future for people to connect. That's correct. That was my understanding. They're not, nobody's being mandated to connect into it, but it made sense to uh, stub out as we're coming through in the street, disturb the street once um, uh, to try and avoid coming back at a later time. Uh, this is a uh, rendering of the architectural plans that were included in the package. This is a uh, typical uh, duplex uh, layout. The buildings are uh, wood frame construction, uh, single story, uh, with offset roof lines and decorative columns uh, in front. Uh, there'll be uh, landscaping around the front of each of the units. Uh, we also on our plan have some landscaping in between some of the units uh, where, it's, where it's necessary. There'll be walkways from the driveways uh, up to the buildings. Uh, the units will have uh, two car uh, garages uh, for the residents that are there. Um, and they're, they're, they're really residential style construction um, intended to um, try to uh, mimic a, a nice design with some offset and offset some architectural appeal to the units uh, for the project. The quadruplex units um, will be similar in nature but essentially mirrored uh, and connected on the other side. Uh, but that is, uh, that is the layout and that uh, rendering, the colors uh, that you see on, on the unit, the gray colors, uh, that's what the applicant is leaning towards right now, but more than likely there may be some options for some variations in the colors. It would be a vinyl sided uh, building uh, with uh, obviously to keep down on the maintenance that, that might go into the facility. Uh, the condominium will have an association. There's some draft association documents that are included in the package. Uh, those association documents cover um, the the setting up the association, the fees, how the facility would be maintained, the roads, the landscaping. It is, it's really a planned uh, development that uh, will be maintained through the association. They would set up with a contract with a landscaper and a company to maintain the roads. Uh, the pump station, the same thing, uh, would be maintained <coughs> privately. So uh, at this point, there's no intention uh, with the exception of that main loop road to ask the town to accept the infrastructure. Uh, the pump station uh, has been designed to stay as a private pump station. And I'm going to quickly go back to the other uh, site plan and I can always bring this up. Uh, there were a couple things that I wanted to try to touch on um, in the uh, uh, completeness review. We did receive a uh, initial review letter from uh, Steve Harding, the town's peer review engineer. Uh, Steve had indicated that uh, he felt that uh, we addressed uh, and were suitable for, for completeness. Um, he d we did ask for a few waivers um, within the, uh, the application and those waivers include uh, a waiver from the f uh, to go to a hundred scale plan for the subdivision plan 
and the reason we were asking for that waiver is, is it, um, it makes it nice to have the plan all on one sheet instead of broken up in multiple sheets. Um, it was still readable. Steve made a suggestion that we don't show the to topography on the, uh, the existing topography on the subdivision plan to even make it clearer, which is a great idea. So uh, we would certainly remove that uh, from the plan. The uh, second uh, waiver uh, was um, a waiver for the, uh, the, so, uh, the site suitability analysis and so I believe it's a soils uh, report. And the reason we were asking for that waiver is that the site is, will be on public sewer and water. Uh, we did have the wetlands mapped on the site. We did do a uh, class B high intensity soil survey which will also be required for the main DEP. And that information all provided us with everything we needed uh, to do the stormwater design, to assess soil conditions, to look at the wetlands and determine whether RP1 or RP2 wetlands and hold all the setbacks. So it, it seemed that um, to go to a, a, a lot, well, we don't really have traditional lot by lots anyway uh, on the site. It's really a, a one lot with a design project. So it seemed that uh, there would be no real benefit from going to that sort of analysis. So we are asking for that um, as a waiver. Um, there is one other waiver that we were asking for and um, that has to do with a topographical, a filled topographical survey of the Sprague parcel down in here. We did a controlled topographical survey of this portion of the site uh, for the project. That was a two-foot contour interval filled survey that we used to develop for grading, drainage, road plans, utility plans, um, all of that. But the Sprague parcel, which is over here, uh, what we did was is we opted to, or we're asking for permission to use USGS topography because uh, we're just not planning to do any development over there. That is solely going to be dedicated as open space. Uh, would be given to the town. Um, it was walked and reviewed for wetlands on the project uh, site. Uh, there were uh, those, any wetlands, there was one small pocket of wetlands, I think, that was mapped by Mark Hampton on that piece. And we saw no real gain to um, go to the level of a detailed field survey. But we do have topo shown on it, which is from the USGS topography. So we were hoping the board uh, would be willing to grant a waiver for that, just that piece down here. Um, another item that uh, was mentioned in the review memorandum that uh, Maureen uh, rightly so mentioned was is that in the deeds for this property, there was mention of a Portland Water District right away. And when we did our boundary survey, what my surveyors found was that that Portland Water District right away is actually off the property and ends up coming down through the open space. Um, and I just noticed it uh, the other day after I read this when we were going back through the deeds that it, it even actually shows up. I may not be drawing this in the right place, Maureen, but it actually shows up on the tax maps off the property too, I think. But we did take a look at that and they determined that it was off the property. So somewhere back in the chain of title, somebody inadvertently thought that it was on this property. So uh, that's what happened there. Um, a couple of other things just to mention on the project that are required as part of the submittal was uh, that we undertook a community um, uh, impact assessment uh, which was included in the submittal. Uh, Maureen in some of the discussion items um, suggested that uh, we might expand on a few of those items in there and we're certainly uh, willing to do that. Um, we uh, are already looking at that and we will certainly do that as we, as we move forward. Uh, another item was the uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, I understand has reviewed this plan and has some suggestions about the trails and, and maybe some changes to the trails, which we're certainly willing to do. We had to start someplace, so we put where we thought maybe the best place was for the trail, and we're certainly open to moving those around. One of the comments, which may be just some confusion, is um, this trail here, if you, the original plan where the small pond was, um, if you, it would actually show the trail going through the pond. That, that is not what we're doing. Uh, what will happen is, is when we reconfigure this, the pond actually runs up through this way, and we have to construct a berm on the downside. And what we're going to do, what we would propose to do, 
is to run the trail up along the berm and around the pond. So I apologize for the confusion on that. Uh, we, um, I can certainly see where that, that, would, that could happen, but we, we, we won't take it through the pond. <laughs> Uh, the uh, other item was a uh, uh, request for a traffic study peer review or the suggestion that the board uh, take a look at that. The uh, developer um, has did a traffic uh, study. Uh, John Adams of our office undertook a, a traffic study for the site uh, which is included in the report. The traffic study looked at uh, turning movements in and out of the site, uh, developed projections of uh, how much traffic in, a, in the peak hour average daily would be generated and, and Paul probably can talk to this a lot better than I can so Paul if I get this wrong you're going to have to help me out on this but um, in looking at it uh, this type of a development generates relatively low traffic because of the nature of the type of development. Uh, the number of peak hour uh, trips that get generated are, are actually very low. The uh, numbers suggest uh, that um, in the AM, uh, like the weekday AM, there's, I think it is um, uh, weekday AM 7 to 9 AM, like 9 peak hour trips, and in the PM 11 peak hour trips. And the reason is, is that the type, the, the market sector we're going after are, are, are folks that have different uh, travel patterns than say a traditional single family residence where there's probably two or three kids in the family. There's trips going out back and forth. We're aiming for a whole different market sector uh, on this site. Uh, the level of service on Eastman Road was uh, very good, a level of service A, and I believe what the traffic uh, report indicated was that we really weren't changing that um, as part of the site. Um, the traffic assessment looked at the, the traffic patterns on the turning movements onto spur wink and, and uh, projected uh, based on those percentages of the likelihood of which trips would go in which direction. And I think it was in the AM, they have a tendency to go westerly and in the PM they're coming back um, as, as what the traffic counts uh, looked at. Uh, so we certainly, you know, it's certainly up to the board if the board decides it should be peer reviewed. Um, you know, we're certainly, um, certainly fine. Um, is, we just felt that it was a very low traffic generation, but we'll leave that up to the board uh, to make a decision on. Um, as we go forward, um, a couple of things I just wanted to uh, uh, kind of bring the board up to speed on um, this project will require Site Location and Development Act permit because we will be over three acres of non-revegetated surface. Uh, we have already set up a pre-application meeting uh, with the DEP next Wednesday and we've invited Maureen and Steve Harding, the town engineer, to uh, sit in on that, uh, that meeting. Uh, what will happen is, is uh, we've actually have the application pretty much all together. Um, We'll go through the application and then uh, we will have to arrange for a public informational meeting that is required within the rules of the Site Location of Development Act. And then we will file that application with the DEP and the part that Joel really doesn't want to hear is that that process takes about five to six months to go through. So sorry about that, Joel. Uh, but <laughs> but, so we'll be going through that process. And what we really wanted to do was uh, get to this point with the town, get some feedback from the board. And we're hoping to uh, then work with uh, the town's engineer, the public works director, through all the technical items of it while we're working through the DEP. And hopefully by late winter, uh, early spring, maybe uh, come back to you. Uh, ready for um, a final approval on the project. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to the board and try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. I have a quick question. Where is the projected, perhaps future clubhouse going to be? Oh, a lot of thank you, Barbara. I, 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 I'm surprised Joel didn't come up and tell me about that. Um, there is a planned in this, a clubhouse right in this location, right here. And we picked that location for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is uh, that it seemed to fit in that location, and two is it provided, we thought it would be a very nice amenity with this pond, and then to have a clubhouse. The clubhouse 
would have a deck with a small portion of the deck actually extending out over the pond. And there's some very nice views, we think, that come out from the back of that deck out towards the open space. So it seemed like a logical place uh, to put the clubhouse. Uh, that clubhouse will not be constructed by the applicant. It's planned and designed into the facility and then would be up to the association to decide if they would, if they would like to build that. Thank you. Questions from the board? Well, I do have a question. If we determine that we need a traffic study and a uh, more of a community impact statement, is that then not complete? Well, the applicant has submitted a traffic study. So the question before the board is whether you want to hire your own traffic engineer to review the traffic study. Okay. And, and the town engineer is bringing that up because we contract our engineering services with OST Associates and they offer a wide range of services. But their specialty is not traffic studies. Um, so that, I don't think that's a completeness issue rather than a substantive review issue. If the board wanted to do that, we would have to retain uh, someone else and, and there are people we can do that with. Uh, the community impact statement is, they have submitted one. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it adequate? So, I mean, there is an opportunity for you to deem this complete and still ask for more information on the community impact study Sorry. statement. You, you could At always. Time or right now? Like now for the, the next, next meeting. For the next meeting. meeting. You're going to. And you know, I, I remember past planning boards feeling very strongly about a community impact assessment, and which is why I provided you with the one that was finally accepted for the Cross Hill development. It doesn't have to be the one for the Cross Hill development. It, you know, there's, there are things that you need to provide. Um, that's why I'm, I'm kind of giving that, your, your, that option. I do remember with the Cross Hill study that the study went so far as to calculate the taxes that would be generated and any other income, you know, excise taxes. And then it also calculated the costs. Is it um, the Dominicus Crossing? The Dominicus Crossing. I'm sorry. It came, in, it came through approval as Dominicus Crossing and then it was changed to Cross Hill when it was being built. Um, this, this particular impact assessment didn't go so far as to quantify to that extent. And you don't have to do it, but I, I thought I'd leave it up to the board in case you wanted that. And I think what the applicant was saying is they are willing to do more. Um, it's your call. How you want to handle can, can we start with the uh, traffic study first? Um, I guess I'll, I'll lean on Paul. What do you think? Do we do? Based on what you've seen, do you think it's wise for us to get a peer review? And I'm, I'm holding I, the fence on this one. Oh, no, I, I obviously have my own opinion as to whether or not I think this requires review, but I think in the prudence of the board, the applicant has submitted a full traffic study. I think okay. similar to what we do with everything else, it would be prudent for this board to get an independent review and comment on it. Okay. So I would, I would strongly suggest that we, that, that we do that. I would that even, me over then, so. Yep. <laughs> I, I would even want to go one step further, and that is that I would like to ask the review team or person to look at it not just in terms of the traffic study, but whether or not Eastman, we've already had several letters, whether or not Eastman Road is going to be able in its current condition to handle, you know, the traffic and or whether there are any mitigating things that should be done in the event there is more traffic than is anticipated so that we have everything and that and you have everything at your fingertips from an independent third party to look at because that's probably going to be one of the biggest questions by yes. abutters is what about the traffic and we really need to look very carefully at how we deal with it i think i agree Okay, so is is everybody in, should we take a vote about that so we're all? Well, I think the applicant has a pretty Well, concern. I mean, I, I'm hearing your, your consensus is you want me to arrange for peer review. Yes. yes. On the track, okay, yes. I'll, do, I'll do that. Is there anybody who's opposed to that who wants to speak up? Maureen, is there a peer review of the community impact statement? We've never done that. Um, certainly. I, I, I know enough to know a little bit about the 
I'll call it the, 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 the variances that you can apply to it. And I guess I, I guess I'm just curious if there was an opportunity for somebody to provide a comment on it. I think that would be helpful for the board. But before, and I'm, I'm trying not to get the chicken before the egg, maybe we no. want to give the applicant an opportunity to submit more based on the comments they've heard before we send it out. I mean, is that, I'm open to either suggestion, but why do it twice? You know, send it out, then have some more information from the applicant, send it out again. I agree. That doesn't, that doesn't seem fair. Thank you. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Owens, oh, do you have a copy of the, the other study that was done? I do. Okay. I do. I, I'm not saying that that's the end all and the be all. It's just a different one. No, nope, no, nope, that's fine. It's a, it provides a good idea of what. It was fairly done. thorough. Yes. But, I, you know, they're hard because you can, there are no guarantees. In right. That, so. <laughs> do, we, do we need to give you a direction on the waiver on the scale, or is that pretty much a closed issue? If you need, you really need to address that because it's really part of completeness. But the town engineer is saying no problem. I mean, yes, what he said in the letter. Yeah, right. it's okay with him. It's not unusual for people to ask for waiver scale in order to get things all in one plan, and as long as you can still see it, it's usually considered acceptable. I don't like it all when they're on two different sheets because then I'm always confused. More confused than I normally I think there were comments about when you get into the utilities that they not be all in one because it looks like, I remember a comment in here, it gets confusing, but yeah. big overall site plan can be on one. So we're, we, we don't need a separate vote on that, Murray. We can simply just tell the applicant that's fine. Uh, the way I've treated it in the past, if you deem it complete, right. it implies the waivers have been granted. Okay, on, on those kind of issues. All right, so I'm. Anybody have anything they think is incomplete? I, I move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wiley Enterprises LLC for major subdivision review and a resource protection permit for Eastman Road Meadows, a 46 unit condominium. Of house one single family lot located at 68 Eastman Road be deemed complete. I Sub have subject to the comments. Of I have one question because the clubhouse really isn't in here at this point. I think that's more for identification than it is for substantive anything. Is that accurate? It is. It's not intended. The applicant is. It, we've showed on the plan. Right. We've actually done the, the site plan layout, the grading around it. Uh, but we are not proposing to construct it. And I think it needs to be part of the title because. Why don't you say with potential clubhouse? Because that really is a. Well, because, because we're either approving the design so they can put it there with just the building, oh, okay. or they have to come back for an amendment. Okay. And I think the applicant's clear intention, even though he's not going to construct it on his nickel, is to say, I want to construct it on my nickel as part of the approval process. I, I mean, I want it approved on my nickel, the engineering part of it. Is that accurate? That's correct. So I think it does need to be in there for that reason. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Are we having a site walk? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Well, this it's, may this may take a little time. It's gonna be Saturday, so yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a long time. Okay. Do you Sorry want to finish and then we'll? Well, we have the, do we have the same? We're gonna have the same issues with uh, engineering plans, Maureen, or not so much on well, this one? Well, I, I don't think you are because there's no Saturday that's available until Saturday, September 29th. So it is what it is. But the, the good news is that I don't think that the applicant has a lot of engineering revisions that need to be right. made no, for okay. the next meeting. So, you know, you, you could actually. I, I don't think the site walk is going to give him some substantial engineering revisions. Now, the, the, I mean, the tasks you've assigned him for next month right. can go on right. regardless of the results of the site walk. It, I didn't do it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Broke it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Does everybody want to schedule a sidewalk? Um, 29th, October 6th, Saturday. The 6th is the long weekend. Not the 6th. No, 29th. October 6th. 
October 13th. Saturday, October 13th. We out of town. Saturday, October 20th. I'll be here. I'll be out of town. <laughs> <laughs> what what was wrong with right. the sixth? Is, is that a problem? Uh, beginning of the holiday weekend. It's a holiday weekend. Columbus oh. Day weekend. So we're going to lose one member either on the 13th or the 20th, is that so right? Saturday mornings is soccer. Right. The Conservation Commission meets on Sunday mornings. <laughs> That's New York Times Day. <laughs> Could That's it, all right. I'll if, come if, if, if we can start at 8 o'clock, I can stay for most. The 29th, bed? This Saturday? 29th. The 29th. Week from Saturday. Um, Saturday. Yep. It's October 29th. Is everybody okay on the 29th? Mm -hmm. I think it's real important that we set it up when? September 29th? Yeah. September 29th. Well, September 29th. Yeah, oh, it's like October. It's a September. Yeah, not September 29th. October 29th is in a Saturday. It's a Monday. Oh, okay. Um, September 29th. Is that good for everybody? Yeah. 8 a.m. Oh, my goodness. That's three days in a row. <laughs> this is my sympathetic look. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's tearing up, I think. These are hard. We already sent the email, Peter. Nope. No. I'll, I'll take it. Is this 8 o'clock in the morning? What time did we just had 8? That's what you said. 8 o'clock in the morning. That's going to work. But someone will have coffee, right? Box of Joe. And Joel, the lower to entrance of the yeah. best place to meet when people park there by the farmhouse. Maybe meet down at the second entrance where the existing farmhouse. With the farmhouse. Farmhouse. Yeah. farmhouse. Yeah. I'd point it out, but I did something. I can't still. Do you want me to bring it back? No. no, it's, no. it's just. Oh, it wasn't me. It wasn't it's you. It's closer to Ficken than Fick, it is yeah. to. You just look for the farmhouse. There's a driveway oh, there where the farmhouse is. Eight o'clock. So, All right, do you want to finish? Can I send it? Do you want to finish the uh, uh, motion? I thought we did. Well, I need, we need another one, right? We need another motion. Oh. Okay, I move. Based on the, the above application be tabled to the regular October 16, 2007 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for making our yeah, that worked pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is <laughs> 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 <laughs>